Harry's sixth year at Hogwarts, he falls in love and finds a memory that he could lead to uh, Voldemort's permanent death. Alfonso Cuaron said he'd love to direct this film, but for some reason he didn't. Mike Newell didn't get chosen to direct this film. Guillermo del Toro was chosen to direct it, but he decided to do Hellboy 2, The Golden Army, instead. And it was going to be Terry Gillum, but he said Warner Bros. had their chance the first time around, and they blew it. Oh dear. So David Yates got asked to direct this film while he's busy working on Order of the Phoenix. David describes the Hoplop Prince as a cross between the Chills of Prison of Azkaban and the fantastical adventure of Goblet of Fire. David Heyman and David Yates took the inspiration from Half-Blood Prince to write the Deathly Hallows script. So we got these returning characters. Originally, Emma Watson wasn't going to return as Hermione, but she changed her mind as she couldn't see anyone else playing Hermione. Claimants Poesy and Chris Rankin wanted to return as Fleur Delica and Percy Weasley, but they weren't in it for some reason. Christian Coulson wanted to return as young Tom Riddle, but David Yates thought he was too old as he was 30 at the time. So the actors were considered for the role were Jamie Campbell Boa and Thomas James Langley, but it went to Frank Delane. Jim Broadbent played Professor Horace Slughorn, a potion master who teached Hogwarts potions before. Snape is the Defense Against Dark Arts teacher. Slughorn has great relationship with Harry. Jesse Cave played Lavender Brown, Ron's love interest. Anna Schaffer played Romilda Vane, who plans to give Harry a love potion because, well, he's the chosen one. Freddie Stromer played Cormac McLaggen, who has a crush on Hermione, but the feelings isn't mutual. Rob Knox played Marcus Belby, a Ravenclaw student. Sadly, the actor is no longer with us, as he got impaled protecting his brother from the gang, which is tragic. Ellen McCrory played Narcissa Malfoy, Draco's mum. I think Naomi Watts was considered for the role. I don't know. David Legano played Fenry Greyback, who's a werewolf, and again, there's fantastic casting here. This fantastic opening with Death Eaters flying down to London, attacking Muggles. The scene where Dumbledore uses his spell to fix Slughorn's house is pretty effective. I also found it amusing when Harry just landed in the water after being apparated. Is that now I heard? You haven't seen him, have you? Apparently he's wandering about the house. Really? 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 How much for this? Five galleons. How much for me? Five galleons. I'm your brother. Ten galleons. Gotta love the Weasley Wizards. Apparently, in the book, Hermione gets punched in the face by a boxing glove and get a black eye, but doesn't happen in the film. I think Harry and Luna's chemistry is pretty sweet. The romance between Harry and Ginny has handled well. The part that I found pretty scary was when Katie Bell got cursed, and that face, my god, that's pretty scary. There's great backstories exploring in the pensive. I love Snape's face in Hospital Wing after Ron finished with Lavender. It's pretty hysterical. We also have pretty emotional scenes like Aragog's death, Harry cast a spell on Trico which gave him cuts all over his body, Dumbledore drinking the potion. One more and then I promise, I promise I'll do what you say, I promise. The cave scene was pretty scary and the most emotional scene has got to be Dumbledore's death. Man, that's heartbreaking. There's great setup for the Deathly Hallows. Any differences from the book? In the film, there's no changing Minister of Magic scenes. Dursley's scenes are cut. The battle scenes of Hogwarts was also cut, as they preferred to save it for Deathly Hallows. And they didn't think Dumbledore's funeral would have fit into the film. I enjoyed this film as well. We got the last part of film story to talk about, which are split into two parts. So we have Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part one.